What is up guys? Welcome to this video. Uh, this one's going to be about habits and how to implement some good habits and how to cut off a lot of your bad habits. If you guys enjoy this video, please make sure to subscribe because it helps my channel to grow and I greatly appreciate that. Now, whether you like it or not, your habits dictate a lot of your life. And if it wasn't for habits, you wouldn't actually be alive right now because habits are basically what keeps the world intact. Everything is conditioned to be a specific way. For example, your heart has a habit or a condition, pile of conditioning, to beat, which keeps you alive. Your digestive system digestive system has a habit of <laughs> digesting food. It's conditioned to do this. It's habitually programmed to, to do this. Same thing with your brain. Same thing with how matter behaves. For example, matter follows a certain set of conditions and behaves in a certain way. Now, habits are an interesting way to look at the world through this sort of lens. And it doesn't really occur to a lot of people how profound habits actually are and how much they actually dictate uh, your life and the outcome of it and you know your behavior and your happiness and you know all sorts of factors that you care about in your life. Now uh, habits basically account for a massive part <laughs> of your moment-to-moment -moment behavior, experience, and emotions. And there's all sorts of ways that we can get rid of a bad habit or implement a good habit. Uh, but I'm going to be giving you something very simple and straightforward in this video and it's gonna be very practical and actionable. So I'm gonna spill the beans right here. The key to implementing a good habit and the key to removing a bad habit is awareness. That's the whole thing. Just be aware of what you're doing when you're doing it. Just notice what you're doing when you're actually doing it. That's it. That's the whole thing. And if you just be aware, you don't have to judge yourself and criticize. Watch my previous video, Observe Without Judgment. That'll help you here. You don't have to call yourself an idiot and a failure or even hype yourself up. I'm this amazing whatever. Uh, just relax. <laughs> Not very much thinking is actually involved here. You can easily overthink it. Uh, you just gotta be aware of what you're doing when you're doing it. That's literally the whole thing. So when you're overindulging in food, if you wanna overindulge in food, do it. Just be aware of it. <laughs> and naturally, this will correct itself because you're not going to cut off a bad habit you know, just cold turkey, you're not just gonna, just gonna eliminate it. You're not just gonna blow it up and it dis disappears. Uh, really, the removal of bad habits is typically uh, a very slow moving uh, dynamic. And if you really wanna clean up your habits, uh, I would recommend, oh, I gotta sneeze. Oh man, it's gonna come in a second. I would recommend getting a meditation practice because what you're doing when you're meditating, and I'm going to come out with some guided meditation videos in case you don't know how, but what you're doing when you're meditating is you're practicing just being aware. Instead of getting lost in judgments and opinions and ideas and specific emotions and sensations and ideologies and philosophies and all this crap, instead of getting lost in all these conditions, uh, you're just watching them. You just let them exist without judgment and you just look at them. That's it. And you don't have resentment to them or hate or anger, or frustration, hostility. And you just watch them. That's it. 
you just be aware of what's happening while it's happening. That is the key to implementing the best possible habit and removing the worst possible habit. Now I have mastered bad habits, okay? I have mastered them. Okay, like what do you like what? Playing video games, I've mastered it. Dude, I have like 10,000 hours probably spent on just like Call of Duty alone or some something like that. Okay? Um and really uh it's important not to view your so-called bad habits as like this bad, awful, awful thing. Uh, really, they're fine for the most part, for the most part. Generally speaking, you eat a little bit too much cake, it's fine, man. You skip out on a workout day, it's fine. To, to watch Netflix and eat chips, it's fine. Like, it's actually fine. Like, you're okay, you're, a you're actually fine. Like, you don't have to worry about it, freak out. <laughs> Like, it's, it's okay. You know, you play a little bit too much video games, that's, that's fine. That's totally fine. What isn't fine, though, is when you aren't aware of the underlying dynamics that are happening within you uh, while this is happening. So, what I'm talking about is the emotional uh, aspects, like the inner resistance, the inner tension, the sort of energetic overall state that you're in as this is happening. That's the problem, is when you're just unconsciously moving through life and you're, yeah, basically a zombie. Now, uh, humans are extremely dominated by routines and habits, like I've said. So implementing uh, habits that you personally like uh, is pretty important for your life, I would say. You know, um, it's important to notice that a lot of so-called bad habits really aren't that bad. Okay, like overindulging sometimes in food or uh, whatever, you know, skipping your workout. Like the majority of what we call bad habits, they're not that bad. Like they're fine. Like you can actually like enjoy these things. Okay, like, it's fine. You can enjoy them. Uh, the problem is when you confuse a lot of these things for pleasure. You think that eating cake is pleasure. You think that uh, playing 10 hours of video game is pleasure. You think that watching a bunch of porn is pleasure. This is pain. <laughs> okay? This is not pleasure. Okay? The reason why you think this stuff is pleasure is because you're emotionally confused on some level, just like every human being, uh, about what pleasure really is and what fulfillment really is. And we tend to associate different things with, what, with either pleasure or pain. So you can associate eating cake with pleasure. Whereas someone who has sort of burnt through that cycle of eating a bunch of cake, they no longer associate that with pleasure. They associate that with pain. Same thing with a recovered uh, cocaine addict. Someone who's just doing cocaine will um, associate that with pleasure. Whereas the recovered addict is going to associate a lot of those habits with pain. Because they've already went through it. And... You know, overindulging in Netflix and movies and whatever, porn. This isn't pleasure. Like, if you actually are aware of yourself while you're doing this stuff, while you're eating cake, it's not that great. And you don't actually really care about it. Like, you don't feel that great when you're eating cake. And then, like, moments after, you're just slow and foggy. And you're lethargic and you want to take a nap. Um, so it tastes good, uh, for most people, but that's just so short lived. And even while it tastes good, there's still tension in your body. If you're aware, you're all blocked up. <coughs> Sorry, I got a, I got a cough. Um, you're, you know, frustrated maybe. 
No, there's just like physical tension in your body. And it's really easy to see that even when you're, you know, doing these so-called pleasurable activities, there's still pain happening inside of you. It's not really pleasurable. And ultimately, the reason why we indulge in these sorts of activities is because we are attempting to remove that tension or just distract ourselves from it. So we're trying to get away from some form of tension within us, some form of resistance within us. And eating cake, watching Netflix, playing video games is typically a way to do that. Now there's ways of relating to these things in a healthy way, okay? But dominantly we do not do that. Uh, at least within my culture, we don't do that. <laughs> Uh, if within your culture you relate to it in a healthy way, tell me where you're from, I'll move there. Um, but dominantly within my culture, a lot of this stuff is just used as forms of distraction. And the thing is, is we're not even aware that this is just a distraction. We think this is fun, this is enjoyment, this is life. No, 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 not even close. This is pain. <laughs> this is pain. <laughs> oh my God, man. Like so many of these activities that involve just overstimulation, people can't even begin to fathom how problematic they actually are for themselves until they actually see the opposite side of what they're doing. So you have overstimulation and then you have uh, not even just under stimulation, you know, a little bit of stimulation is actually great. That's basically relating to these things in a healthy way. But having, uh, for example, um, just totally unplugging from everything, removing all distractions from your life, going on, for example, a meditation retreat, perfect example, it becomes immediately clear to you that uh, <laughs> all the forms of pleasure that you have in your life are not satisfying. They can be, but it's actually our own emotional turmoil that blocks us from fully enjoying the pleasures of life. And when you remove the pleasures of life and you're just left with the turmoil, <laughs> uh, it becomes very clear to you that, okay, I have to do something about this. Like, I can't even sit still and enjoy my life. I can't just sit down on the floor and just be grateful for this moment. Like, I can't, I'm incapable of doing that, which, you know, that will probably be one of the things you notice if you go on a retreat or even do some basic forms of meditation. You'll notice that you want to claw your eyes out really quickly. Your mind is like a monkey jumping back and forth, or your mind is even better. It's like, a bee's nest going absolutely batshit crazy. Uh, your body's tense, etc. cetera. Uh, enough of that. But it basically becomes clear that the quality of your life, you know, in terms of your happiness, is not going to be dependent upon something. It, it can't work that way. It'll never work. The quality of your life in terms of happiness, um, is dominantly going to be dictated by your ability to embrace and accept the present moment and whatever it actually uh, brings. So your resistance to the present moment is what dictates really whether you're suffering or whether you're feeling good. Because I experiment with it for yourself. Eat cake while being very tense and rigid and against the idea of eating cake and hating it. Like a lot of resistance to cake. You're not gonna enjoy that cake. Whereas if you let yourself fully lean back and remove all the body tension and just eat the cake and really uh, feel into the, the texture of the cake, really become aware of the sensations in your mouth, the saliva, uh, the specific taste, where it is in your tongue as it slides down your throat, you will enjoy that cake a lot more because your ability to become conscious of and embrace reality has expanded. Whereas in the former example, 
um, you know, you're not doing that. You're actively denying reality. So we have two examples. We have eating cake with resistance versus eating cake without resistance. Eating cake without resistance is lovely. Uh, <laughs> probably if you don't, you don't want to eat too much of it though. Uh, while eating cake with resistance, did, did, I, did I say that right? Eating cake without resistance is lovely. Eating cake with resistance uh, basically is hell. Uh, you can't really enjoy the cake. You're trying to enjoy life when you're eating cake, but you're unable to because your emotions are just so distorted and uh, just full of tension and just crap, really. Like, I don't have to explain in any other way other than you are creating uh, an environment of total shit within you. And uh, you have to clean that up, really, to, to properly enjoy life. Um, so I hope that sums everything up uh, in, in that regard. So um, I'll give you an example of a habit that humans have created in order to live smoothly and further enjoy life. Time is something we've constructed and is a habit that we all really uh, do. You know, we all partake in it. It's a cycle, it's a routine, it's a habit, it's a series of conditionings. Same thing uh, in this context. Um, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc. Nine to five is your job, whatever. These are all habits that we are partaking in in order to live in an organized way in order to get along with each other, in order to just maximize um, fulfillment, really. Ma <clears throat> maximize well-being. That's what we're doing. We're trying to become happy when we invent something like time. We're trying to get along. We're trying to make things work smoothly. We're trying to survive in a smooth way. So this is just one particular habit that has dominated a lot of your life, not to mention just eating habits, relationship habits, habits, um, you know... Like in your body, for example, like your digestive system, like I said, your brain has certain habits to it, has certain conditions, very subjectively as well, your thought, you have thought patterns, thought habits, you go down the same roads of thought, and after you go down it so many times, it's hard to kind of move in other directions, you get very um, sort of uh, identified, and you get kind of locked in a trance with a particular frame of thought. Uh, mainly because you're identified with it, like I just said. When you're really identified with a series of thoughts, a series of mental habits, it's hard to break out of that now because you believe that this pile of conditioning and habits is you. So to remove these habits would be the death of you. Um, now, <clears throat> got a little cheat sheet right here. Not too much to it. So, you know, diet, I, I, just, I just wrote a bunch of examples of different habits, just diet, relationships, and interpersonal skills. So fighting with people, for example, can be like a habit you have, or, um, you know, just being socially awkward can be a habit you have, and that can be determined by other habits as well. So playing too many video games, and then you try and go talk to people, and you figure out oh, you suck at talking to people because you just look at your PlayStation all day. Uh, yeah, that makes sense, you know? Like, all your habits really come together to form what you call yourself. And really, the world at large is just a series of interconnected systems, habits, and routines. And this really uh, is an interesting perspective on our world, first of all. And it dictates a lot of our lives. A lot of how we decide to, to live in the first place. So, addictions as well. How do addictions actually start? With habits, really, as one perspective, just just one perspective. There's a lot of uh, ways to analyze how addictions start. You can talk about human needs and how you know people maybe don't feel like they are valued and they uh, belong in certain places, so they uh, start doing cocaine or drinking a lot of alcohol to feel that sense of acceptance or love or courage that they desire. Now, I'm going to talk about habits, obviously, because that's what the video is about, but I get sidetracked. 
So what's one way to look at how addictions start? Bad habits, whether it's a food addiction, a cocaine addiction, a sex addiction, porn addiction, video game addiction. It very slowly begins to snowball until it becomes this like series of just bad habits. Like, you know, you wake up and you want to just play video games and, and do cocaine, okay? But like, generally speaking, I think we can agree that these are like bad habits, you know? Most people, they hold that as a bad habit in, in their head. Um, so it snowballs as like, you know, you buy a video game and then like you maybe buy, buy some cocaine or, or something. Whatever the possible habit is, eating cake, okay? Like any habit, you begin with a few sort of uh, innocent little actions. But then this begins to snowball and snowball and snowball until your actual sense of yourself and your life becomes this particular habit, whether it's even a thought pattern or whatever. See, like, what are political identities? They're ideologies, but these are just habits of thought that people have really began to identify with over and over and over again. You know, your whole conceptual identity is just... Uh, I'm getting way too abstract here. Um, it's just a bunch of habits that you've done over and over again. So your actual sense of yourself, your physical, biological self, that sense right there is just a series of habits that you began to identify as. Now, um, going back to just addictions, um, complicated topic. I'm not going to get too into it here, but it starts out as just some very minor, innocent, bad habits, whatever it is, eating too much cake, watching too much Netflix, you know, you do it a couple times and then you want more 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 and then it snowballs. And then this, this actual pattern, you build a state out of this pattern, a particular feeling and a particular way of thinking that you come to identify as. And this actually further reinforces the habit. So these, what I'm saying here, it's multiple habits coming together to form uh, your life, really, to form what you call yourself and your life. So you have uh, a habit of being late for work, and then you develop this train of thought that says, oh, I'm always late for work, I'm no good. And now you have this habit of being late, you have this habit of creating this state of suffering, you have a habit of identifying with this whole situation and right now we have three habits that come together to form a specific part of your life and yourself. So you can notice how different habits in your life actually connect with each other to form a larger whole. And if we implement some healthy functional habits, then we have a healthy functioning system where if we have the exact opposite, then we have an unhealthy system. And like I said, the key to implementing a good habit is awareness. The key to removing a bad habit is awareness. When you're doing the thing that you want to do or don't want to do, be aware of it. See, when you want to remove a bad habit and place a good habit in its place, just be aware of what you're doing. Be aware of how the chocolate cake actually makes you feel. Be aware of how playing five hours of video games until, uh, four in the morning actually makes you feel. Be aware of how eating McDonald's makes you feel. Be aware of how not exercising makes you feel. Be aware of how not stretching, stretching your body makes you feel. And naturally, when you're just aware of this, you, wanna, you just want to correct it. Like naturally, you have an inclination to correct it. You don't have to force yourself or beat yourself up or come up with this whole narrative about yourself. It's just very, very simple. Just be aware of what's happening while it's happening and life will actually naturally correct itself. Very, very naturally, you're just gonna wanna implement a better habit. 
because you're going to be sick of suffering after eating too much chocolate cake. You're going to realize, I've done this a million times, I'm not very satisfied ever, and I feel worse after. I feel slow and lethargic, I got brain fog, I can't think, I can't feel properly, I'm very unaware, I want to take a nap. And naturally, you will want to just break out of the cycle, because one, you realize that um, you're in a cycle. You know, you, you break out of your robotic ways of being in the world. And then you naturally replace it with a good habit, maybe meditation. Maybe instead of eating cake, you just sit down and meditate for 10 minutes. You just be aware of all your sensations in your body, all your attention, all your thoughts, all your motivations, all your desires, whatever happens to arise in the present moment. You just sit down and you look at it and just be aware of what your existence is. And naturally, things kind of just correct themselves because you're becoming more aware of the dysfunction. You can also read books. I recommend Atomic Habits by James Clear. I'm pretty sure that's his name. And I recommend just, like I've said, just be aware of what you're doing while you're doing it. And it's not enough to think to yourself that uh, I'm aware. No, no, you're not aware. You're not currently aware. You're sleepwalking through life. Okay, this is how human beings are 99% of the time. We're not aware of the sensations in our body as we're walking down the street. We're lost in a particular frame of thought. We're lost trying to fulfill some random desire that we have. We're lost just in particular conditionings. And we're not even aware of it. We're sleepwalking. We're totally sleepwalking. This becomes immediately clear uh, if you just do a little bit of <laughs> meditation. Because for the first time ever, you will not be getting sucked into a thought pattern. You will not be getting sucked into an emotion. You will not be destroyed by your low quality habits for the first time in your life. Because you will just be able to be aware of them and see the mechanics that give rise to these things. So don't think to yourself, oh yeah, I'm aware, as I'm eating this cake, I'm aware. You're not aware, okay? Odds are, you probably have no idea what true clarity looks like, okay? True clarity will blow your mind, okay? If you, right now, <laughs> became fully clear about this moment, you would shit your pants. It would be way too much for you to handle, which is why you would freak out and probably want to distract yourself from it, like you already are. You're constantly distracting yourself from yourself. You're constantly filling up your life with bad habits. Um, and this is all running on autopilot. So that's why I just say, just being aware of these things will immediately begin to correct it. Uh, and I don't mean to like shame you or anything, you know, uh, like I said, I mastered bad habits. See, I mastered bad habits. Uh, and even like I said, they're not that bad. You know, don't think of them as these bad things. You can relate to watching Netflix and playing video games and eating cake in a healthy way. But it's the fact that you don't even realize that all this is a, is a distraction. That's the problem. You're not even conscious that this is all a fucking distraction. You don't even realize what you're actually doing and why you're doing it. You don't realize that you're eating cake to remove emotional resistance and to remove tension. You just do it because your thoughts, oh, I like cake, oh, cake. And then you just act on it. There's no witnessing happening. There's no reflect, reflective abilities happening. It's just very robotic and habitual. It's very just asleep. It's sleepwalking. It's unconscious. Uh, and I really want to emphasize, I'm not shaming you. This is how humans basically are. Humans, for the most part, will never become conscious of the majority of their habits because it's just too much to become aware of. It's an, it'll overload them. For the most part, what's going on inside of you is not conscious. Your heart beating, your digestive system, your brain firing off stuff. Most aspects of your mind are below uh, the sort of threshold of awareness. Most aspects of your mind are not conscious. So, um, you know, that can be a large issue.
in your life. If you're doing things, you don't know why, there's things kind of happening, arising inside of you, you don't really know what's going on or how to relate to it, and then you're eating cake and playing video games, <laughs> you know. Um, be aware. That's it. Practice awareness. Just read, read some books on it. Maybe try The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle or something. Some basic book. Try like some David Data books. Maybe learn a little bit about human needs. You know? Uh, try Sadhguru. S-A-D-H-G-U-R-U. Um, yeah, that's good. That's good for now. That, that information is fine. Uh, so that's just some basic ways to get started. Um, and I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't worry about it too much if I were you. Uh, what I would focus on is just being aware of things while I'm doing them and letting myself naturally correct uh, myself, really. Watch as when you're being aware of eating cake and how it makes you feel, a thought arises of, I don't like this. Like, it's gross. The cake is gross at the end. There's like 20 grams of sugar in like this one slice. This is disgusting. I feel depressed after. I feel anxious. I have pimples. I like, I don't want this. And then right there, you're already fixing it. It's already fixing itself. And then this gains momentum. And now you put good habits in, in, in the places where the bad habits once were. So, uh, yeah, just be aware of what you're doing while you're doing them. And don't convince yourself that you're aware. You're not aware, okay? I want you to notice that. You're not aware. Do you actually walk through life like fully immersed in the experience of life or do you walk through it constantly lost in some problem running in your head? Constantly lost in some thought loop? Constantly lost in some particular body sensation and being tense? That's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. Have any questions? If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.